Não é tempo técnico, mas é intervalo aqui no podcast. Já imaginou se seu time tivesse um seguro para não perder nunca? Pois é, isso não existe. Mas com a Zurich Seguros, quem não perde nunca é você. Na Zurich Seguros, os planos se adequam às suas necessidades em qualquer momento da sua vida. Seja seguro de auto, residência, vida e muito mais. Diferente de alguns times, na Zurich Seguros você pode confiar. Para saber mais, acesse zurich.com.br ou consulte seu corretor. Olha o contra-ataque aí. Vem que vem o time avançando rápido pela linha de campo. Bola dominada no pé do camisa 10. Ele vai para cima, passou pelo primeiro, passou pelo segundo. E bateu a grande área, vai chutar. Bateu, é gol! A experiência de futebol mais autêntica já criada para os games. Junte-se no 5v5 Rush, a nova maneira de jogar com os amigos e leve seu clube para a vitória. E a Sports FC 25. Dê tudo pelo clube. Já disponível. This is Ricey. You've been hearing my friend Josh Arnold, Mr. Money Talk, for years on the Radio and Garage Logic podcast. With the new year approaching, I strongly recommend you sit down with Josh for your no cost, no obligation, 48 minute consultation on your investment. Investments, including your IRA and 401k. You can benefit from Josh's years of experience navigating different market and economic conditions, and he'll always give you straight talk and not sugar-coated advice. Give Josh a call now at 952-925-5608 to book your no-cost, no-obligation, 48-minute consultation. That's 952-925-5608. You'll be glad that you did, and tell him Ricey sent you don't forget to ask why is it 48 minutes josh investment services offered by josh arnold investment consultant llc a security investment advisor past performance is no guarantee of future results all investments involve risk all comments and opinions are josh arnold's and do not constitute investment advice patrick royce is a paid endorser you boys ready? don't think i won't right i have it right here here we go <laughs> Scotty Scheffler. Okay. Uh, I was going to lead with Roman Gabriel. Okay. That's, uh, we'll get that's to Roman. Good. We get to Roman. Scotty Scheffler wins again this morning. Pat, he's going to win 10 one, Masters. One by three strokes. Uh, and he has now won. Here's what I didn't realize. They, did you watch this morning? The uh, playoff to yes. which it was going on. They put up. First to 10 wins on the PGA Tour. Mm -hmm. David Duvall mm -hmm. won 10 in his first 33 starts. Mm -hmm. Way, Tiger was second with 59. Mm -hmm. And uh, now Scotty's second with, what, 10 and 51 now, I think. 10 and 50. But four out of the last five. Four out of the last five. And the other one, he was second. Yep. He was second wow. in the other one. And he could have, but he missed a. Did the guy make a bomb on him on 18 or maybe a yeah. big putt to beat Why him? Why was there so much concern about the wife for the Masters? Yeah, well, she no, still no. hasn't had the kid yet. Yeah, no, the way he's playing, she's going to have to hold that thing in there yeah. until about 11 months. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, until they get to that lousy middle of the summer season. Get down to the John know. Deere Classic, yeah, have right the there. baby. Yeah, right. Yeah. I said, honey... They want to give me, and now he won't go this week. This will be a good week to have it because nobody will Where play are we it. going this That week? Stupid, idiotic New Orleans. Oh, I hate duo. that tournament. I hate that thing. Me I won't too. watch it. It's stupid. Or could we do like the one mother wanted to do with the eclipse? where the mother in Texas yeah. wanted to have the eclipse move yeah, to a she weekend. she told the school, she asked the school, could you, can we have the eclipse on the weekend? <laughs> so, so then what are we going to, why, why did we want that? Well, she was, didn't want her kids uh, to uh, miss school. Yeah. Uh, oh, or they had a doctor's appointment or something. Something like that. Yeah. yeah. She wanted to know if we could reschedule it to the weekend. Can we reschedule yeah, the eclipse? Can we yeah. say to Miss Scheffler, can you have the baby on a Monday? You know, she, can you do the same uh, she thing? She never took that astronomy course. You know, that, <laughs> now, I took the astronomy course at you and did drop it after a, uh, after a quarter because they wanted you to know stuff. But I did know that uh, you, you can't move the eclipse. I If you dropped that. a course because they wanted you to know stuff, <laughs> yeah. you'd have to drop them all. Yeah, but uh, there's basic knowledge. And then with astronomy, yeah. there's like... Okay, it's factual. You did know. you ever go up and look up the telescope and all that? I did, yeah. I had a, who had, one of their athletes, who was one of their great football players, 
had the seat next to me, never saw him. Never yeah. saw him, and he passed, and I damn near didn't, you yeah. know. He got himself a B, and I got myself a D plus or something. Was he also majoring in, was it electricity? That no. was, uh, <laughs> what's his name, Hall? Uh, Mark Hall. Mark Hall. Mark Hall. <laughs> electricity. What are you majoring in, Mark? Electricity. <laughs> Oh, he died young, you know. I know. He died. It was he was a great player, but he was not. Uh, he was, I think they they twisted a few arms to get Mark into school. There's no <laughs> doubt about it. He was. Uh, I once wrote a very distasteful column on him that I hope never shows up though, because uh, kind of making fun of the way he. Uh, Who had him? Dutcher. Dutch had him. Yeah. Dutch had him. Dutch had him. Yeah. He had the number one recruiting class in the country. Yeah. He had you not only have uh, Tucker and Dale Mitchell, mm -hmm. who led him to the uh, Big Ten title in 82, but he had Leo Routens, the Canadian, who left, and Mark Hall, who flunked out before his senior year. And Mark Hall, in my opinion, was as a college player, was better than either Tucker or Daryl wow. Mitchell. Wow. Really? He was great. Yeah, he was, he was good. Great. Can we go back to Scotty? Let's go back to Scotty, yes. Well... He defies everything you're supposed yeah. to do. He, he, his feet putter. twirl around yeah. when he drives, mm -hmm. or any any long shot. His feet leave the ground and does a pirouette, and yeah. and yeah, he's not much of a putter, you is know, he? You know, he only makes a putt when he has to. You know, when yeah. he gets a couple of bad holes, he's not much of a putter. But his, you know, they were talking this morning about he's number one and. Distance. He's number one in uh, hitting greens. He's number one in uh, saves, you know. And then he's, I think he's chipped in 12 times this year, they said. 12 Including times. in this tournament. Yeah, he did uh, for a bo uh, bo uh, uh, eagle, right? He I think chipped so. chipped in for a three. Yeah. He is just, uh, he's on a tiger roll. <laughs> oh, man, he is. Yeah, tiger was, uh, I I'm sure, I think there was one time when tiger was, had a streak where he was running about 25% victories for mm -hmm. a couple of years. So, mm -hmm. But out out of the shoot, there's never been anything like this except Duval. Let's hope the same thing does not have. We Have you ever read anything, the complete details of what the hell happened to Duval? Just that he had a lot of dad problems. Did? Okay. Yeah. Dad hounded him when he didn't win. Yeah, or stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, he wasn't a real. I know he didn't like all the attention. He didn't like press conferences and stuff like that. Scheffler seems to be just a really grounded yeah, guy. Yeah, he does. He doesn't. I mean, he doesn't get offended at any questions, and you know, you know what I've noticed. He's only twenty seven, isn't he? Yeah, twenty seven. Yeah. You know, I. You know what I've noticed. You don't hear you the man as much this year. What, Good. Are, they, what are they doing? Do we get know. rid of those? Except in Phoenix, you get the drunken louts. But uh, I don't know. That crowd, that crowd there, Hilton had it. They basically all own a condo next door, and they right. come out and watch the golf tournament, and then they come back north, right. you know, after the after the tournament's over. But uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's an amazing run that he's been on, and... I thought I saw this this morning, and I thought of Richard Royce. Okay, yes. Roman Gabriel died. Yep, I saw that too. Last the number year. two draft pick. Mm -hmm. The Rams picked him in 1962. Wow. He still holds the Rams team record with 154 touchdown, touchdown. passes. Wow. Is he? Uh, he was a first. Of course, we he didn't know this at the time because firsts weren't important back then. But now it's an, it, we need to know he was the first Filipino American oh, really? quarterback. Okay, his uh, was I thought he, he was just he, an is American. He, is he in the Hall of Fame? Oh God, yes, I think so. He was the league MVP in '69. He was 83 years old. Mm -hmm. He died peacefully at home of natural causes. You didn't hear much about him after he retired, no, he did, did you? He, well, he was in some movies, you know, in the early years. They got him a, a tremendously uh, handsome fella. And he was, uh, I think I think uh, some of his wives might have had competition or something because he didn't, he had three or four wives. But uh, He said he retired with heart problems and arthritis, but happy. Mm -hmm. He uh, split time between Wilmington, North Carolina and Little River, South Carolina. Wow. All right. he, uh, he played at North Carolina State. 
He got married at age 20 to oh, Suzanne, because oh. I looked that up, while he was at North Carolina State, right? North Carolina Six, State. 6'5", 235 pounds. North Carolina State or North Carolina? North, North Carolina, Carolina State. State. Yes. And uh, Suzanne, of course, was the one who had an exchange with my father, and uh, that was the first wife. They got divorced in 71. Right. But, uh, and you might want to reflect for listeners what your father did to Roman Gabriel. All right. Uh, the Vikings are having their first really great season. In 68, they went to the playoffs, but they were like 8-6 and six and got beat by the Colts, the Baltimore Colts back then. And then in 69... We are on the way to a 12 and 2 record I believe wasn't mm-hmm. it 12 and 2 and uh, the 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 pairings were set up early not necessarily how your record went but which one of those divisions you were in and you won it then you knew you were going to play the coastal or something mm-hmm. so when you were in the central and the Vikings were going to be the home team so Two weeks before the Rams, or at least two weeks before the season ended, my father, who had a cachet <laughs> of winterscapes mm-hmm. of, uh, that he took himself, that he clipped out of the paper, the Armistice Day blizzard. Mm-hmm. Big, he, he was big on the Armistice, like, like the St. Paul paper used to right. be. We never let one go by without uh, <laughs> having a feature on the Armistice Day blizzard. But he, he started sending... Roman Gabriel, Los Angeles Rams, Los Angeles, California, clips of all the uh, snowfalls. Snowfalls yeah. that was uh, trying to alarm Roman as to what weather he would be facing when he got here to play <laughs> with the Rams. And uh, some, I mean, he used some of his better inventory, yeah. which had to hurt him, but right. he, he was trying to do everything he it's could to help. Better him. inventory. He was, he was trying to do everything he could to help the Vikings. Yeah, right. right. Yeah, he's a good Minnesota sports fan. And my brother and I kept saying, Richard, you got to get more of an address than Roman Gabriel, Los Angeles Rams, Los Angeles, California. We're really getting there. Because he sent at least five or six of these missives right. about every other day for like two weeks. And now they, they we beat them a hell of a game, very mm-hmm. close. And then we beat the Browns 27-0, I believe, Jimmy Brown and them, and go to the Super Bowl. And then in they 69. Super, go to 69, 1970 is the game, January 11th, 1970, I believe, in uh, in New Orleans, right? In New Orleans, yeah. Against Kansas City. Yes. And uh, we get beat, and there's a famous photo that ran in every paper around the country of Joe Cap mm-hmm. leaving the field, holding his right arm in the fourth quarter. Mm-hmm. And the Vikings have been taking this ass-kicking most of the day. And four or five days later... Richard gets a note with that picture inside it from Suzanne Gabriel. Mm-hmm. He, she sends it to sends it to the old man with that picture, and it just says, "I think he, Dick Rice he always used on his uh, yeah. thing. He was known in full then. What happened to your team, Dick? What? What? <laughs> what, what, what? You know, something like that. And it was the triumph of my old man's life oh, yeah. that Roman Gabriel had received his. And he must have been taking him home and showing him the yes, wife. Yeah, right. You did. He, I said, look what this guy in Minnesota is doing. Crazy right. guy from Minnesota. Look at this snow. <laughs> yeah, right. Th- would that have led to maybe problems in the home, the Gabriel home? Did Richard in some way ca- I cause? All I know is he was an extremely <laughs> handsome man, mm-hmm. legendary handsome man in Los Angeles, California. Quarterback in, in the, the Rams. late 60s, <laughs> quarterbacking a Rams team that was successful. I see options. He's got I don't options. know. I see Chris Rock would describe him as a man without options. After retiring, Gabriel worked briefly for CBS. Yes. He went into coaching with stints at Cal Poly Pomona, the Boston Breakers of the USFL, and Raleigh Durham in the World League of American Football. He also dabbled in acting. His movie credits include Skidoo, starring Jackie Gleason in 1968, <laughs> in 1969's The Un 
undefeated, starring yes. John Wayne and Rock Hudson. Yeah, there was he a appeared lot of violence in, such, in that movie. He appeared in such TV shows as Gilligan's Island, Perry Mason, Ironside, and Wonder Woman. He also joined Bob Hope on a USO mm-hmm. tour of Vietnam. But these guys made no money. I wonder what oh, he, I no. wonder what he did for a living all those years. Well, he probably made a lot of money just being on those TV shows. Yeah. Well, I maybe mean, not a lot. Not I don't enough, know enough, but he, you know, he must have gotten in. He probably had enough money to invest in something. Maybe. Right? And, yeah. Uh, and, but um, yes. He was also elected to the College Football Hall of Fame in 1989, but is not yet not in, the, in the Pro Football wow. Hall of Fame. Not? No, no. not wow. a no. Are you on a Wikipedia page by any chance? Uh, I can be. Well, what is this Filipino stuff? Here uh, that's go. only a modern. That's only a modern era uh, thing that we'd Mama. have to note. He's the first Filipino American. Was Gabriel, he ever described as a Filipino? Gabriel was born to Edna May Wyatt and Roman Eldonzo Gabriel yeah, okay. Sr., a Filipino immigrant. Okay, but where was he born? In Wilmington, North Carolina. Yes, okay. So, he was American. <laughs> right. Yes, he was. I he was a United states uh, Gabriel grew up poor and suffered from asthma, but he played high school football at New Hanover High School, where he graduated in 1958. You know, we should have had Joe on a, as a guest on our show when we were deciding whether a guy qualified as a gay pioneer. Oh, my God, you're right. A gay pioneer or yeah, not. Yeah. If you're a Division three lineman, that's not, not, you're, not making a gay, you're not a pioneer. You're not a gay pioneer. No, not We've already had other. That's yeah, right. We had, a, we had great, because <laughs> remember, the, who was the first it guy It started with the, the NBA player, Yeah, wasn't it? Yeah, uh, the Collins. NBA player. Came. And then guys were rushing out, and, and all of a sudden, some guy from Sioux City would break a story about a backup lineman from Buena Vista. I mean, yeah. it's just throwing these not out. Not a pioneer. Not a, scream. Not That's a not a story. pioneer. Not, not a, a pioneer. Not a story. <laughs> no, you got to be, a, you know. Well, it was the, wasn't there a linebacker, right? Greg Luganis. He, he could have been a gay pioneer, gay pioneer. If he ever would have admitted that he was a gay, right. but, uh, you know, gay, but... Uh, How'd you like the way your Timberwolves played Saturday? Damn fine. They never played better as a franchise no, in their history. In their history, and uh, they uh, they did it uh, everywhere. Rudy Gobert set the stage in the first quarter when he got every rebound, and then you know neither Mike Mike Connolly never made a shot all day hardly, and and Edwards wasn't good in the first half, but the third quarter he was oh, magnificent. Why can't they do that three more times? <laughs> I don't. Well. The other team... What adjustments can Phoenix make? Well, I bet the first adjustment they made was to call the NBA office to complain about the physical nature of the games. Probably. They're, they're trying to get some refs in here going to call more fouls. Because uh, we... Uh, I, I was actually listening to the Phoenix TV postgame show. I, I wanted to see what they were saying. And they got Tom Chambers. How in the hell do you find that? With our super uh, uh, secret device. Super secret device, yes. Oh. I found it. I found it, but Tom Chambers, who was a really good player sure. for them, and yep. uh, was talking about He said, when they got your their hands on you, you have to drive to the basket to get them to call the foul. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, and but the NBA uh, playoffs to this point have been uh, pretty pretty physical. So it must, it's like there's orders from on high. But it will be watch the whistles in the first quarter uh, uh, Tuesday night. I was Did listening. You love to- the by play between Anthony and, Edwards and, and, and uh, Durant. Durant. Well, that was a very little charming hunk yes, of professional because sports. Durant has been around forever. Right. One of the great He's play- balding. Yeah, one of the great <laughs> playoff players in history. Right. He's average like thirty. But I think everybody finds Ant amusing because Including Durant. Yes. It was laughing yeah. and it's not like, you know, they're gonna be Olympic teammates right. and uh it's uh but he's you know, everything he says is a little goofy. Right. His uh he would not have done well in Laura Limmerman's English class. No, I mean, his, <laughs> right. his use of verbs and right. uh, contractions and yeah. stuff. Is, but uh, yeah, I think he's. Uh, I think they also respect the fact that he plays his ass off. Right. You know, he's. Uh, you know, 
Now, what's he, what was he saying to Durant? You old man now? You old yeah, man? Yeah, something something like, like that. that. Yeah. And Durant's just smiling. Yeah, that's right. right. Speaking of the Timberwolves game, Joe, there I was is, alerted to this. By the way, more oh. of that in the NBA than anywhere. Oh, yeah. Where they, yeah. Where they, they appreciate each other's skills, you know. Uh, we can add another thing to the list. Thanks to Girk for pointing this out on Twitter. Ready for the Roycey list? Yes. I despise whiteouts. <laughs> I despise whiteouts. <laughs> Put that on the list of things I hate. You mean a snow whiteout? No, or? the whiteouts in the stands. Of, yeah, oh, whiteouts, white yeah. Shirt. They had a whiteout. Oklahoma City had a whiteout. They out. had it in Winnipeg uh, last yeah. night. Yeah. And the announcers were very puzzled. Yes. Why are they having a whiteout? They're wearing dark uniforms. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and you can't see the ball. You know, it screws up the TV. You okay, add whiteouts. So, yep, we and got all that you in. jackasses sitting there wearing your T-shirt. You got you got a jersey that's worth like seven hundred dollars on, and now you cover it up with a two dollar T-shirt yep. <laughs> because it's what, free. It's free. <laughs> what a bunch! So you wanted to be part of the crowd. You know what? <laughs> the Whiteouts never won a game in their life, okay? I hate Whiteouts. What was the, uh, we had a bit, I think it might have been Twins related as far as attendance. Hey, the Twins are having another green out because there was nobody in the stands. Because <laughs> yes, right. the seats at Target right Field are green. Yeah, it's a green out. See, <laughs> I got a hunch you're going to be able to get a ticket tonight. <laughs> what if the White Sox beat them? Which yes. is very possible. Oh, God, yes. Because the White Sox, I mean, mathematically, they're already is, out of it. This is one of the worst. <laughs> this is like the third worst start in baseball yeah. history. Yep. Uh, three Baltimore, games. Three and 18. Baltimore, well, lost the 21 in a row, you know, yeah. was the, the yep. record. I think they came here and we, they damn near ended it here, but I think the Twins swept them and then they went someplace and finally won a game. And then uh, they mentioned another one, but I think this is the third worst ever. Wow. By the mighty whiteys. Not really helping Jerry Reinsdorf's campaign to get right. a billion dollar dome stadium in Chicago, I right. think. But that doesn't mean. No, they, the Twins are vulnerable. Hit, they're hitting 188 as a team. Mm -hmm. That's only seven points below us. Mm hmm. I also did the math, Joe. I did this on Twitter, too. All right. If the Twins continue at this pace, if everybody in the Central continues at this pace, the Twins will finish 64 games out of first place. Wow. But the Whiteys will finish 98 games out of first place, which would be really difficult. <laughs> well, it, 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 98, it, 98 games out of first place. Has that ever happened before? Not 98. No. The Cleveland Spiders... I think I have the, were the worst ever. They won like nice. And 16. then we had the mezzo meter. We had the mezzo meter. Yeah. That was back in the day. Yeah, the mezzo meter because that was the '82 team. The Twins can't you? continue at this pace because you'll get Lewis back. You'll get Korea back. The Listen. worst thing that ever happened to Buxton was he got healthy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> here's here's the. I got to tell you this story, Owen. My neighbor kid, four years old. Yep. He isn't out in the backyard playing baseball. He's shooting baskets in the front yard. He follows all the teams. He and his mom are driving downtown about two months ago. They see a Buxton billboard, and he says, Hey, there's that guy that's hurt all the time. Yeah. He's four. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the guy that's hurt all the well, time. Well, he's now healthy and he just strikes out every time. Yeah, he's. Uh, then he then he thinks he hits a home run and it's not. This it. stood at the plate. This is the other thing too, well, and this isn't it. just the Twins. I see this throughout all of baseball. Why why has it become a thing now where we're okay with watching strike three go right down the middle? I know that drives me insane. Yeah, well, here's the deal. They would not, they're would they stuck having, for now, they're playing Willie Castro at shortstop. Mm -hmm. Willie was an okay guy moving all over the field. He's not anything near a major league shortstop. But did you see the news on hot prospect Brooks Lee? Mm -hmm. the, uh, in the number one draft choice a couple of years ago, had a great spring. Herniated disc. Oh, good. Oh. They said he had a little back problem. He'll be back in a couple of weeks. Now it's a herniated disc. Uh, so you don't come uh, well, back from that in a couple of weeks. Yeah, you don't. You you might end up missing most of a season. I the only thing you can say in the, in their defense is the left side of the infield was supposed to be the best thing they had, 
would have been the best thing they had, and now they have Willie Castro playing short, short and either Miranda, who can get a hit maybe, and Kyle Farmer, who's 3 for 38 at third base. And why they signed Carlos Santana, I have no idea. I can't believe how bad he's been. I mean, he, he just got his first hit at Target Field, though, the other day. So that you was ever good. listen to Gladden after the show? I, Once I've, in a while. I caught the post game yesterday. After the show, how was the Dazzle Man? I, I like the Dazzle Man because I don't think he gives a bleep. No, he's <laughs> he'll well, he's, tell you what he's thinking. Yes, and he was beside himself <laughs> with Good. anger okay. that Varland appeared to be pitching a game that someone handed him and told him this is how you're going to pitch today, mm-hmm. and told him what to do rather than Varland going pitch. out there and just pitching. He's throwing, okay. Yeah. Yeah, and so he, he was very upset. He wanted him to have a game plan. And somebody then, gave him a game plan, and well, he didn't like it. His game plan today is he's back in St. Paul. Is he? Yeah. That's what him. Gladden predicted. He'd yeah. be in St. Paul. Yeah. Right. They sent him out, and uh, but that's good because he is well. Gladdy, you know, has cut back to a hundred games. And he's only going on three road trips, so yeah. he really doesn't give a damn. Yeah. <laughs> but he never, so he's got all the home games? He never did. <laughs> you know, he, he's got all the home games and then some road games. And, you know, once Remember when Baltimore fired their announcers? Was it last oh, year? Oh, yeah, for they, being critical. Yeah, yeah. Well, Gladden wasn't the last year one game <laughs> no, there. Uh-uh. No, they, they brought him back then, right? Yeah, for, they, because of public outcry. Yeah, because it was so stupid. Yeah. yeah. And it... Well, they never said anything. No, I miss Gladys post game, but I, I once in a while talk to him and can hear it not over the air. He's <laughs> not impressed, that's for sure. But well, he's he's uh, he's uh, he's, uh, he's got three grandkids now. He wants to be a granddad, and mm-hmm. he, you know, get get him out of the farm, get him working, mm-hmm. <laughs> and, uh, cheap kids, labor. <laughs> those kids, and uh, and he's uh, down to a hundred games a year, and but. And with Chris Atterbury as his partner, he doesn't have to talk much either. So no. That's, uh, that's, uh, Man, Chris can talk. Oh, God, can he talk. The highlight of Chris. I learned the other day of two major that. leaguers who were in a Lego championship. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I didn't want to know that. No, no. Not, not. And, uh, by the way, he was fantastic when he did the postgame shows because he had all these yeah. tidbits and stuff. But And uh, a rain delay. He could fill time oh, on a right. rain he delay. Could fill time on a rain delay. I learned what one but, but one guy made a big jet plane out of Legos. The other guy <laughs> made a house or something. You now know. here was the highlight though, and I missed it, but Judley told me about this. The, he's got Molitor in the both mm-hmm. booth, right? If a Molitor's always on the last road trip, always good. And got to say like seventy-five words and in nine innings, and and he starts, he starts. Telling a yarn about the 1983 oh. Orioles and Brewers. Atterbury starts telling it. Oh. But the 1982 Orioles and Brewers famous series when they came to town for the last four games and Milwaukee only had to win one. Mm-hmm. That's when Earl came out on the dugout mm-hmm. and spelled out Orioles and Milwaukee lost the first three. They were tied and then Milwaukee won. And he's telling this yarn, and he's got Paul Molitor who, next to him, right. who was the was leadoff on the hitter, freaking team. The leadoff hitter, and then had 20 hits in the World Series. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, bring him in there for a little bit of the insight. Paul, there. your thoughts. Did Paul get a word <laughs> in on that story? Uh, I did not hear it, but Judd said very few. Yeah. Yeah. So... Yeah, because Paul probably remembers that. Didn't Milwaukee win the series that year? St. No, Louis no, did. No, the they lost to the not. Birds. They lost to the Birds. That's yes. right. They lost. To Jim the Cott birds. was on that Birds team. Was yeah. that his last year? Yes, he was. Yep, that and, was Cott's uh, last year. And Mo- Molitor set a uh, major league record for hits in a series. Didn't he? I was so in a right. cab in St. Louis that got tipped over. In the really? Celebration? Yeah, in the celebration. Wow. Well, it right. didn't hurt anything. It 82. just kind of went on its side and flipped back over. Wow. Yeah. Man, alive. The people were excited in downtown St. Louis. Oh, yeah. That's 82. a baseball Why town. Why didn't you go to dinner with Wicker and I? Where Wicker. were you? We went to Stan and Biggie's, and that's the night Stan was in there oh, entertaining the crowd, bleep-faced, yep. and Al Hurt was in there with him, and they played the harmonica, and uh, Al played his deal, and... Uh, and they got in there, and then, then 
And Musil got up and talked to the crowd, and everybody was there, and, but he forgot his punchline. He forgot, you know, because he'd had a few. It says, kills. "Look him in the eye." Yeah, look him in the eye. Shake their hand. Shake and, their hand. And and there's another there's one. Another okay. one. Three things. Always remember their yeah, name. Yeah, right. That was that was uh, yeah. Wicker and I were we got in the Stan and Biggie's, which was a very mini, uh, mediocre restaurant, but they did well on the night before the World Series started. That's for sure. So. Do we have to pause today? We do. I need uh, to hear from Patrick and, and our fine I friends at the Valley Group. My back pocket here. Oh, and I'm looking this up, Patrick, while you get that. Molitor had five uh, hits. That's the that's most in a, a single game. In a single game. Yeah. And, but there are uh, so, several players that have had 13 hits in a single game. How about the World Series? series. How many did you get? Oh, he had five in the first World Series game. Cor- correct. Yep. These are my boys at the Valley Group of GM dealers, Apple Valley and Hastings. Jim Paul and and his son, Brett Paul. And uh, Jim, this is what Jim has to say. The uh, past several years have been the craziest in the history of the car business, the pandemic, supply chain, chip issues that caused extreme inventory shortages that led to some dealers charging thousands of dollars over manufacturers' suggested retail. They never did that at Jim Paul's uh, establishments in Hastings and Apple Valley. And uh, they knew that it would leave a bad taste in customers' mouths. And more importantly, from an integrity standpoint, it was just wrong. Well, guess what? We're back on our feet here as far as supply is concerned. The best inventory in years, really all the Buick and GMC models, even the Yukons, the heavy-duty pickups, and the Hummer EVs. Plenty of deep discounts with manufacturers' rebates and low interest financing. 0.9, 1.9, for goodness sake. It's a great time to go back to Jim Paul's and buy a new car or one of the many used cars out there. Anyway, the Valley Valley Buick GMC in Apple Valley and Hastings or the valleycardealers.com. Go to the website and you can check out the... uh, the uh, supply of uh, cars that they have there, that it's fantastic. 120 on a lot in Apple Valley. This is car buying without the bad aftertaste, Jim Paul says. If you're like me, your fantasy football team's already in the tank, a big nothing burger in the win column, and that's why I'm joining the millions of other fans who are winning money on underdog fantasy. You can win up to a 1,000 times your money just by choosing higher or lower on your favorite player's stats. Will Sam Darnold have higher or lower one-and-a-half interceptions? You can make money on that. Making picks on underdog is straightforward, and signing up is even easier. Just head over to Underdog Simple to use mobile app or underdogfantasy.com. Sign up with promo code Roycey, and Underdog will give you a free pick to use on your first cash pick em entry plus up to $1,000 in bonus cash when you deposit. That's Underdog Fantasy, promo code Roycey to claim your new customer special of a free pick and your deposit offer. Must be 18 plus, 19 plus Alabama and Nebraska, 19 plus in Colorado for some games, 21 plus Massachusetts and Arizona, and present in a state where Underdog Fantasy operates. Terms apply. Void in Colorado. Concerned with your play? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www.ncpgambling.org. Arizona, 1-800-NEXT-STEP, 1-800-639-8783, or text Next Step to 53342. New York, call the 24-7 HOPE line at 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text hope ny 467369 Meu nome é Cairo Santos e eu sou o kicker e único brasileiro jogando na NFL. Cada chute, cada jada conquistada, cada passo me levou para mais perto dos meus sonhos. Agora, a cada 200 reais em compras com seu Visa cadastrado, você tem a chance de ficar mais perto do sonho de assistir ao Super Bowl 59. E usando seu cartão de débito, você ainda concorre a prêmios diários de até mil reais. Não importa o tamanho do seu sonho, dê o primeiro passo. Visa, apoiando seus passos aonde você quiser chegar. You know what it is, Joe? Huh. It's draft week. Oh, yeah. Christ. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Are we on right now? We are, Joe. Welcome Joe, back. Oh, for Joe, Pete's when, sake. You, when you... Mark Craig from our paper, I don't know if you saw Sunday's paper, had a wonderful... To you. <laughs> Mark Craig had a wonderful piece Sunday on the history of draft... You know, oh, mock draft. I didn't see it. And how this all started with this 
screwy little guy from New York, Joel Buxbaum. Remember him? Did you ever meet him? <laughs> no. He was he like never left his apartment, <laughs> and he was the strangest. Well, how could dude. I meet him? Then? Said, well, because he was yeah, indeed. You, know, you might not have met him, no. but he was a. But he started doing this when he was like eighteen. He was weighed about a hundred pounds because he never ate. All he did was just look at and and he started it. And Belichick and guys like this embraced him when they were real young coaches. Sure, because he knew he knew more about college football players than they did. And then of course Mel Kiper was eighteen when he started too. And uh, you know they, they nobody Joe and I go back to the time. They basically held a draft, and then when it was over, they told you who uh, who they picked. Yeah. You know, it was not a big deal. Where yeah. where is it this year? Is it uh, Detroit. It, Detroit? I mean, is there is it a big convention? And oh you, God, it'll be there. just got ejected. Oh, yeah. he'll be there from game. Radio Row, <laughs> Radio Row. Uh, they now have Radio Row at the uh, at the draft. <laughs> the yeah. bestest one they. And we're bidding like hell. We're oh, trying yeah. to get the draft. We got to go yeah. get our guy. Yeah. Um, no, oh, mean, you mean yeah? We're, we're trying, trying to get, get it here. Sure. In the Twin Cities. But you know, my favorite is when they get the crowd shots and you got the guy in the lion garb and he's all yeah. face painted up, ready for that announcement of pick 28 or and whatever. They traded they got. it. <laughs> I like that when they traded oh, it. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. I think that Timberwolves are going to turn this into a basketball town. You think so? Yep. Well, they're on the, the Vikings bandwagon. don't have a great future right now. Uh, but you'll never, you'll never top. Football, for goodness sakes. People are nuts, you know. Are they going to draft the kid from Michigan State? Uh, Michigan. 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 If they, if he's available, yeah. Ryan, I mean, is that They're, they're going to try up uh, McCarthy. G- 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 I was an Irish kid from it's Michigan. Kid. I <laughs> didn't know which school, but I was now, close. They really oh, like, McCarthy. I think they'd really like to get Drake May, by, but they'd have to go all the way to third to yeah, get yeah. him in uh, New England. According to New England uh, guys like Mike Reese, who's been around forever, it would have to be a historic uh, package of uh, players in order to get. Uh, to when get is it this back. week? Thursday. Thursday. Do you know how we do her now? You might have missed this. I might have. Fighting chance. There is a chance. First round only. Okay. Thursday, first round only. We used to get two rounds. Right? Yep. And then Friday, second and third round. Which at this moment won't occupy the Vikings because nope. they have neither a second or a third rounder, and then Saturday you do the rest. Of them. Oh boy! So they turned it into a three-day orgy instead of a two-day orgy. Where do the locals go to watch this? Where's the party? Oh, right. You party? mean the Miller Lite draft party at yeah. U.S. Bank Stadium? Oh, it's at the Bank Stadium. Oh, yeah. Well, by right. the way, you can go watch it with our daily uh, Purple Daily crew oh. at the Fillmore. How about that? And they got her sold out, the really? Fillmore downtown. We got the Purple Daily guys got like 500 people showing up for their drafts. So. What do you do? Uh, because you, you cheer you know, when you got your Because there's a lot of time between the. <laughs> yeah. What do you do? What do you do? <laughs> <laughs> Well, if we're getting a little cut of the alcohol, then I would say that's what you sure. do, right? I do recall, you know, back in our booming days of being the home of Sports Talk, 1500 ESPN, I remember sitting in a promotions meeting in which it was brought up, you know, I wonder if Joe and, Joe and Pat would do a draft show. <laughs> and I said, uh, hi, can I be in the room when you when you guys ask Joe and Pat to do this? Yes, I, I'd love to do it. Well, those guys. <laughs> not going to happen. They do. Right? <laughs> They do. They they have a show about the Vikings five days a week all year round. It yep. does well. It does extremely well. Yeah. But I, bah. I don't know but what is the bah. the Fillmore is just kind of a it's a neat party. place. It's is that like, is that owned like by a the por- a new modern First Avenue? Right. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's is very that cool. affiliated with the Fillmore in San Francisco? I don't know. I mean, you just I can't take that name. The oh, Fillmore yes, you is. Can. Uh, oh yeah, you got a lot of. You got to have a. Uh, Fillmore license or something to use that <laughs> name. Maybe it is. I don't know. I think it might I be. I haven't been there. I've seen it there. Where is it? It's right on that block in the North that Loop. has the new restaurants and stuff. So, Is it a nightclub? We went to that. You went to that steakhouse in Minneapolis, right? The new what? one? What's the name of it? Been the, there a year or so, a year and a half. steakhouse. I have not. You, you did not. Is that's the one where they bring you a lot of meat? A lot of no, they don't bring you the, the Brazilian thing. Yeah, no, 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 oh. no, no. That thing's downtown. This is a this is a high end steak joint, uh, right uh, 
right on First Avenue then, and you got to, you know, uh, what's the name of it? I don't know. But the I, good news is I went there, and my brother-in-law picked up the check. Really? So that was I nice just went to, to a high-end place that's in a hotel. Oh, that was uh, the for Four Seasons. Yes, the Four oh, Seasons. Very good restaurant. The restaurant you like? The it? restaurant's an in, independent of the hotel, but it's in the hotel. Mm -hmm. Was it nice Four Seasons? Hotel. I think it's the Four Seasons yeah, right there. Yeah. Well, I'm looking for your place on First Ave, Patrick, and I'm not picturing it here off the top of my head. Hey, you mark my somewhere. words. I bet that's I bet that's affiliated with Fillmore West and East. It could be. Okay. Could Is be. it a music venue? Yes. Yes. It's well, amazing. that's I okay. bet you that's part All of the right. Fillmore deal. All right. Well, we can, I think we could get in if you want to go. To the draft party? Yeah. I can't. You should wear your, you know, you, you can a, wear your hat that's got the cup holder with the two straws. Yeah. You got your purple, you got your, you got a thing then? Oh, no, no, I'd go white out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did you see the crowd shots last night of outside the stadium in Winnipeg? Yes. And, they but, love this, their hockey Yeah, team. but six weeks ago they were complaining about lousy attendance and they might have to move the franchise. Oh. You're kidding. Because of prices. Well, because I was yeah, there. Yeah, Winnipeg's a small market, and their right. their attendance was like they had some games where they, they got only the had, smallest rink in the league. They only had about ten or eleven thousand really? sometimes because the prices are so. But I'll silly. say that because I, I was there the night the Wilds lost to them, whatever year that was, Game Five, and I yeah. thought the city was going to burn to the ground. Oh, they were partying like yeah, mad. I know, and they 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 still have incredible interest. Yeah, but. They don't have the money to go to games. What do you think of the Phoenix uh, going to Utah for a billion dollars? Yeah, for a, the by the guy who owns the Jazz, the jazz. Right. and owns a big hunk of the soccer team. Yep. So this is you know this guy's apparently they're going nuts buying tickets. Yeah. Well, they're going to have the a Mormons, real rink. Those Mormons like their hockey, I guess. Well, I when know. I drove through there yeah. coming back from Arizona, so, I cannot believe how big. That area is. So if It'll you're support. one Mormon, do you t if you're a Mormon, do you take one of your wives to the hockey game and the other one to the basketball Ooh, game? Well, that's a good point. You could. Someone, or you could you take know. them all to the same game. Yeah, that's good. Wait yeah. a minute. So they're not going to play at the same arena, the Jazz? Yes. Oh, I yes, thought you said. But Delta I said there. they're getting finally going to have a real rink. Oh, they're I'm playing sorry. in a okay. college yeah, rink you're right. now. You're right. Yeah, yep. they are. Gotcha. And, but they promised the guy from Phoenix, uh, I wonder if the NBA got a hunk of the billion. Because they promised the guy from, Fe I mean, the NHL, if they got a hunk of the billion. Because they promised the guy in Phoenix that if he gets a new arena built in five years, mm -hmm. then he can have a team. But they'll have to pay through the nose. Well, right? how many teams are in the NHL right now? 32. So, well, then They're 30. Talking expansion well, again. you can't go 33. There'd have to be 34. Yeah, there'd have to be 34, but then you're going to have to divide it up. Did you know what mathematical thing occurred this year, though? Hmm. Every division got four teams in the playoffs because all the wild cards came out of the division in which, huh. uh, in which, because usually it was three, three out of each division, and then the next two best conference teams. I think it's the first time. Also, did you notice this? Uh, over the weekend, the uh, all the NBA home teams won the first round, and all the NHL for, really? they were fourteen and all of the four, wow, which is a lot harder to accomplish in hockey than it is Toronto in got a chance to beat Boston. <laughs> Didn't look good I starting. I don't think so. Because this is the year Boston, you know, puked on itself last year when Tampa had their great team. Didn't Florida beat them? Uh, then they, they got Florida beat right was away. down three games to nothing to somebody and won. Wasn't yeah. that Boston? Could have been. I thought they got beat right out of the bat. But but it's weird because Tampa Bay, their best team ever, got beat, swept in the first round and then won two in a row. And Boston, uh, this Boston had the big failure last year, so they're my pick to win it because they, you know, they flopped. Not, not as much pressure. Well, but I picked, we'll find out in only in a mere two months. <laughs> well, that's probably shorter than the NBA. Why it's does the NBA the do this? Do we spread them out? Yeah, it's driving people crazy. Yes, and they said originally when this, this they first went to this system where they put them all on TV and didn't want them to compete against each other. Uh, that, well, we're going to take a hard look at it. That's about 10 years ago, and they haven't changed anything. You still get days off, you know. Well, even if the Wolves' Suns go seven, won't it be 
two full weeks? It'll oh, be yeah, in May. Yeah, well, they, they play Tuesday, and then they play Friday. <laughs> Then they play Sunday in Phoenix, and then they play like Wednesday again. It's uh, wow! It goes on forever. So. How many games do you have to win to win an NBA title? Sixteen, just same like as the hockey. NHL. Same as 16. hockey. Sixteen. That's a grind. It really that is. is a grind. But uh, anyway, I am. I know it's draft week. And I know we got the wild. Uh, yeah, I mean we don't have the wild. We the got wolves. the wolves in the playoffs. But how can you? I'm going to be there tonight to see the twins and the mighty whiteies I mean, to solve the dilemma. Which one of these teams is the most horse poop? <laughs> <laughs> we will find. We will be able to in the next four days. We will make. Will that this decision. be an early see in Fort Myers? <laughs> They lose tonight. I might declare see you in Fort Myers, even though I have no plans to be there. Now. <laughs> you know. All righty, is that enough? That's, That's enough. Good enough. That's I enough. We were pretty damn good. Tonight. I, think yes, so. I think so. Patrick Ricey here with the Canopy Group facts. Fact one: the Canopy Group writes more new business in one month than an agent who represents one company writes in three years. How is this possible? We'll give you the other facts to understand why. Fact two: the Canopy Group offers sixteen different insurance companies, not just one. Fact three: the Canopy Group offers annual policies, not six month. policies. Policies that leave you at risk for two premium increases annually. Fact four, the Canopy Group offers one deductible at claim time, not two, three, four, or even more. Fact five, the Canopy Group will shop your home and auto insurance with their 16 companies each and every year. Captive insurance agencies can't shop for you because they only have one company. Now that you have the facts, it's time to get your options. Call 800 967 3389 or visit thecanopygroup.com.